Mahito would have to find a suitable hideout for himself. As he strolled around town, he alternated, turning left or right each time he came upon a traffic signal. He followed cats prancing along ahead of him, and he walked in the direction of clouds whose shapes struck his fancy. As he did, he felt keenly how humorous humans were. The city belonged to them, but none of the humans passing through the streets walked as freely as Mahito. Everyone looked tense, bound by inhibitions and vanity, living short-sighted lives in vast and fathomless city. Without ever knowing how infinitely large the sky was, they took a city of stone they had divided up, further divided it as their souls saw fit, and lived subserviently within those narrow confines. Mahito had come to understand their worldview through the words that they used. For example, they called this morality, and they called that common sense, and they called that emotion. Their souls received external stimuli, and they merely metabolized them like machines. This process controlled their bodies, so they feared the judgment of others, sought the world's favor, and relinquished their freedom. What a waste. The fetters of affection, a human creation, bound them all. This was why curses had to change human beings. If all they could do was crawl around clumsily like that, they should surrender their world to others. That's what Mahito thought. Think as your soul desires. Walk where the wind blows. The sun would soon sink in the west. He could hear a river murmuring. All right, y'all. That is section two of chapter three, Allegory in Darkness, Mahito's chapter. Just going to, you know, obscurely point out a couple of things I found interesting. Um, They're not using all that open space is essentially what Mahito's saying. Without ever paying attention to the sky, they take a city made of stone that they've already divided, further divide it, live in their cubicles miserably ever after. But they own all that open space. Where is your domain, humans? Where is it? Anyway, speaking of where, that brings me to the second thing that I want to... uh make far more confusing than it was in the chapter. He heard a what murmuring? <laughs> he heard a river murmuring. Now, rivers and the crossing of them serve quite a purpose in the jujutsu world. We are entirely sure what that significant sig sign <clears throat> significance is but what we do know is that the significance of them and their uh, attachment relation correlation involvement uh perpendicularity <laughs> with barriers was important enough to include post-production in chapter 145 I always say 145, but it might be 146. I might be a little bit, a little bit wrong. So please, God, don't fillet me. Um, now, Mahito, we know, ends up enjoying um, underground rivers. I'm going to leave that there because I am getting into spoiler territory. Whoops. See you in the next one.